Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com and welcome to Resurrection Sunday 2024 on our Gregorian calendar. So what's the big deal if Jesus was not raised from the dead? Why, you know, why does the resurrection matter? Who cares? Uh, you know, these are the questions we get from the critic, from the atheist, from other other folks from other religions. Um, this is just a brief overview. Scripture states twice in the below verses, we are wasting our time with Christianity and the Bible if the resurrection is not true. So without the resurrection, we physically die and our bodies are eternally buried. They stay there in the, in the dust forever. Um, uh, and you know, short version consequence of sin is death. It's why we die. We weren't created that way. We, we were created eternal, but sin entered in the picture and we all do it. So death wins. We are dirt and worm food. Uh, our bodies become the byproduct of worm digestion it's very it's what a it's a very pleasant uplifting thought uh job 21 verse 26 together they lie down in the dust and worms cover them that's that's the reality of our dead bodies uh without jesus's resurrection our faith you know what we believe is described as vain and worthless. So, you know, the apostle Paul's making a point. You, you gotta have the resurrection. Otherwise this whole thing is vain and worthless. First Corinthians 15, uh, verse 14, part B, your faith is also in vain. First Corinthians 15, verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. And that's the point of it. Um, without, without Jesus's resurrection, we're not resurrected and there is no overcoming death. Uh, you're stuck, you're stuck in sin, your body, um, your body pays the consequence for sin. So a couple of quick word studies in the Greek, uh, vain, Kainos means empty, devoid of truth, contains nothing, empty-handed, without a gift, fruitless, no purpose. Our faith is in vain without the resurrection. Uh, Worthless, mataios, uh, means devoid of force, truth, success, result. It's useless of no power, and these are per Strong's concordance, so... You're not overcoming anything without the resurrection is the idea. Um, And this is our faith without the resurrection of Christ. Without Jesus' resurrection, there is no hope for our bodies. We are dead and buried, a corrupt and purposeless mess, an empty shell, just laying there in the ground with dirt and worms on top of us. So this, this next little section is the part that, you know, makes my head hurt and, um, something to really noodle on, if you will. If we are not resurrected in the future, so if there is no resurrection of the dead or the resurrection of believers in the future, then Christ's resurrection in the past did not occur. So Paul is so sure that we are going to be resurrected um, uh, that if we're, if, if, if we are not resurrected, if believers are not resurrected in the future, uh, then Jesus wasn't resurrected in the past. Now we have historical proof of Jesus's, uh, resurrection, overcoming death, hundreds of witnesses, over 500. Um, and some of those include, um, you know, even women, oh my gosh, even women saw him resurrected. Um, 
500 believers, apostles. Um, it happened. Some Roman guards, they saw the empty tomb. Observation, this observation is stated at least twice by Paul. And this is the security and truth of our future resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 13. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. 1 Corinthians Corinthians 15, verse 16. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And so that's how sure our future resurrection is. And that's the thing, too. Um. Uh, one way or another, we are all eternal. So the question is, is, you know, when you are resurrected, whether it's at his coming or whether it's at the the great white throne judgment there toward the back end of the book of Revelation, everyone's going to be resurrected. Now, the question is, is your destination with Jesus or without him? Um, so it's going to happen at some point or another. And with the resurrection of Christ, Psalm 16, verse 10, was prophetically fulfilled. Psalm 16, verse 10, For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. So anytime you see the Holy One in Scripture, it's it's defined here for you in 1610 of Psalms. Um, Holy One is Jesus. With his death, Jesus did not stay in Sheol or Hades or the grave. Check out Ephesians 8 through 10. There was no decomposition of his body. And we'll close with Acts 2, verse 31. For seeing this, David spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his body see decay. So... Just a quick overview on uh, the resurrection. You know, just just a couple of aspects of the resur- resurrection. I mean, there have been books and volumes of books looking at various, you know, proofs. We've written things in the past here on the proof of the resurrection. Everybody's, you know, the atheist, other other religions are constantly, well, what, what, what proof do you have? Well, there's plenty. Um uh, but but today, just thought we'd take a little time and focus on consequences. Why is it necessary? Um, so what if we don't believe it? What What's the reality of that? And does it have any implications um, to us? And the answer is yes, Jesus' resurrection. He was the first fruits. He was the first one to, to be resurrected from the dead. And, and he was presented in front of God the Father as a holy and blameless sacrifice, uh, free of sin, took sin on our behalf, paid the penalty for sin, and uh, resurrected from the dead. And him being the first to be resurrected, he sets the pattern for those who believe in him who will be resurrected in the future. And just remember, that comes first. The resurrection comes first, then the rapture. The big question is, is how long is that distance between those two events? Some people think it's rather instantaneously. Uh, I don't know. Could be a day or two. You know, it could jump from one feast to another, from like first fruits to Pentecost or to Teruah. I don't know the answer to that, but I think you need to be ready. <clears throat> it's getting closer. Every day it gets closer. Uh, so... We look forward to that as well. So wishing everybody a great Resurrection Sunday or Easter, as the world would call it. Um, Blessings. Looking forward to our resurrection. Take it easy. Bye.